is Judy from Patterns for Pirates and I'm going to be sewing up a sunflower swim top with you today. I am making one for my daughter so it's a smaller U size. She picked the higher straight neck, full back, and a ruffle. My main fabric is going to be this light pink with orange and black leopard print. Um, that will be the same for her ruffle. And then her straps are going to be, I cut this little stripe from a different rainbow stripe fabric to match the orange. And then my lining is going to be this plain beige. Um, other than that, I have my quarter inch swim elastic. I highly prefer the cotton swimwear elastic. I think it's easier to work with and a little bit softer. But you can use whatever kind of swim elastic that you prefer. All right, let's get started. Okay, right, here we are. I'm going to start off by grabbing my two lining pieces and sewing them together at the side seams. Alright, now I'm just going to repeat that with my main fabric. If you're new to swim, you can also baste this first, especially if your fabric is very slippery. I like to stick a pin in there and very carefully leave it in there until I know it's almost to the needles and it's really got it and it's nice and even so that one doesn't slip and you pull it out and they're uneven at the edges. But if that is tricky for you, it is easier to baste on a sewing machine. So you make sure and get these edges nice and even and a smooth finish from the front to the back. You can just sew a few basting stitches right here on the top and the bottom to make sure you're getting them nice and even. Okay, next I'm going to sew up the straps. I'm just going to fold it right sides together like this. And I'm going to put a pin in and grab my quarter inch elastic because this is the youth. The adult swim top uses um, this a little bit wider, 3 eighths inch. The, um, the youth uses this smaller. So I'm going to pin it in here and I'm just going to sew it into the side seam, I mean into the seam as I stitch it down. This has a quarter inch um, seam allowance so I'm going to disengage my knife on my serger so I'm not cutting anything off. And that's the same, I just really want to make sure my needles have touched all three layers I'm sewing, sewing through before I remove my pen. Go nice and slow, you're not stretching your fabric, you're not stretching the elastic. I'm just letting it glide in at a one to one ratio. And I'm just going to repeat that on my other strap. We're just going to flip these right sides out. You can use your favorite turner. I actually just usually use a safety pin. And I'm just going to poke it through one little spot and then put the safety pin through. And it takes a little bit of finessing right here to get it to start. And then once it starts, it's nice and easy. You might wonder why we put elastic inside the straps, but it really helps the straps stay on the shoulder, um, especially when they get wet. I would not skip this. I like the 
elastic in the straps um, a lot. So there's my strap. And I'm just going to repeat on this side. I tend to always put my seam in the very back like this. Some people like to put it on the side, especially since my stripe wasn't quite big enough. I'm going to put it on the back so it looks like it's solid orange. Okay, what I'm going to do is baste my straps on my top now. Again, I like the seam to the back. I'm going to pin and baste it a quarter of an inch away from the raw edge. There we go. Now they do not crisscross, they just go straight back and I have a notch here where I marked from the pattern piece. So I'm going to go ahead and pin it on the back as well. I'm just going to baste these down on my sewing machine. I like to baste with a bigger seam allowance. Um, and I just remove those basting stitches after. You can also baste on a smaller and bigger so that it's really secure. A basting stitch is the longest straight stitch on your machine. Mine goes to a five stitch length on a straight stitch, so that's what I'll be using. So I'm basting here at an eighth of an inch, and then I'm going to baste again. Uh, a bigger one that I will have to remove at the end that is about 5 8 inch. And that just makes sure um, it's nice and straight when it sews. The, it holds it, you know, on the inside and the outside of the seam so that it doesn't move diagonally, doesn't come out. leaning a different way than you want. And it only takes a few seconds to run the second basting stitch. They're very quick to remove as well, so it really doesn't add very much time or effort to go ahead and do the second, do all the basting stitches here. Okay. This would be an excellent time to slip this on your little one or yourself and make sure the straps are a good length for you. Or your, the little one that you're sewing for. You've only basted them on. It would be really easy to tighten them or maybe cut them a little bit longer depending on your preference. Okay, now what we're going to do is turn our lining right sides out and we're going to slip it inside. so that it's right sides together and I'm just going to pin it around you can also baste it around which I usually pin first and then baste anytime I'm adding elastic anywhere I like to baste it first because I like to add the elastic on my serger I find my serger feeds the elastic a lot smoother than my sewing machine, but I also find it 
difficult to keep all the layers exactly where I want them. If I try to sew multiple layers and add elastic. So I always, always, always baste my multiple layers together first so that I'm only attaching the elastic. So now that I've pinned this all in place, I'm going to baste around the entire top on my sewing machine with that same long basting stitch. Does not matter where you start or stop. I do this um, with a smaller seam allowance so that I do not have to worry about removing it after. This is just to keep my layers together while I'm adding the elastic. I highly recommend not skipping this. Basting on swim is just something that's going to give you a much easier, smoother sew and a better finished garment. just trim some of these serger tails that I still have everywhere. I never like to trim my serger tails very tight. I'm also going to trim off these little notches I had to mark where the straps go. I never like to trim my serger tails tight until right before I'm going to be sewing them because I don't want it to unravel before I have made my final stitch. I missed this layer right here, even basting. That's why I always take the time to baste because it's really easy for swim to kind of slip and slide. And when you have the smaller seam allowances, you might not even catch it like I did there. I was using an eighth of an inch uh, allowance there. But you really don't want it to get it, you know, a quarter of an inch off that's going to make a difference. So make sure you baste, get them all exactly how you want them before you do your elastic. Now it's time to do our elastic around the edges. I highly recommend always adding your elastic to the right side of the fabric. It's going to make it flip out a lot prettier and nicer. Um, if you do it to the lining, sometimes it makes the lining want to pop up. What I'm doing right now is I'm going to pin it right inside my strap elastic. So um, here's my strap elastic. So I'm going to pin the edge of mine right butted up against that. I don't want to overlap them because I don't want to make it too bulky right there. So I'm going to go right up against it, and then I'm just going to not stretch either and pin it right to the next elastic and cut it right there. And I'm just going to surge straight across the top, not trimming anything off. It's just a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Not stretching the elastic, not easing it in, just the exact same measurement right there at the top between my straps. All right, now I'm going to do the exact same thing around all the rest of the back. Now I'm just going to go right over top the straps in the back since there's no join there. I am just going to go right over the top. It'll be slightly more bulky than the front, but since we have to stop on this edge anyways, I like to take the time to make that a separate piece. Whereas the back, there is no corner or join that we need to stop at. 
So I just make it all one piece there. You want your elastic lined right up against the edge of your fabric. You're not trimming anything at all. If you're using your sewing machine, you still want them all lined up on the edge. I'm using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Again, you're not stretching. I'm going to cut this a little bit longer and trim it. So the gap there should just be the width of your straps. Okay. There we go. Now we're going to flip this out. Kind of shake it out. Make sure everything is looking nice and neat. I'm going to take out my bigger basting stitch here. You can take the time to top stitch this right here. I often do all my top stitching at the very end, but you can top stitch that now. I'm just making sure my seams are pressed the same way on the bottom as I did on the top. And I'm going to pin at my side seams and baste along the bottom so that stay right where I want them. So I'm just going to baste around the bottom. Again, I'm going to use a very small seam allowance. I use about an eighth of an inch from the edge. off my serger tails now. Double check that I got both layers all the way around. Looks like I missed the lining on some of it so I'm just going to turn it over the other way so I can see the lining a little bit better on the part that I missed. Again, this is why this basting um, step is so important. Some can be super slippery depending on the quality and content of your swim fabric. My favorite is a nylon, which tends to be more slippery. <laughs> so I always, always, always baste. So I'm going to set this aside for right now. It's ready for the ruffle, but I'm going to set it aside as I prep my ruffle. I'm going to run two basting stitches down the top. And the only reason I have a top is because I added a center notch to know where the center is, so that's going to be my top. I'm going to do one inside the seam allowance, really short, around an eighth of an inch. And I'm going to do one on the outside, about five eighths. It's a 
forgot to mention you don't want to go all the way to the edge. I like to run my basting stitches while it's still in the flat. You can also sew up your side seams prior to your running your basting stitches. Okay, now that I have my basting stitches, I'm going to fold it in half and sew it into a circle. This is only for the full back. So the open back you would not sew your ruffle all together, but since this is a full back, I'm going to sew my ruffle together. I'm going to do it on my sewing machine. Since I'm right here at my machine. There we go. All right. Now I'm going to gather it to fit the bottom of my um, top. So you can put the seam either in the back or on the side. Put mine on one of the sides. So I'm just going to align my one seam up on my ruffle with one of my seams, one of my side seams. And then I'm going to align my center of my ruffle to the other side seam. And you can do this to the center front, center back as well. Okay, now I am just going to take my bobbin threads. I do different color on my bobbin and my top, so my bobbin threads are yellow this time. I'm just going to gently pull them and move my gathers around until I feel like it is evenly gathered around and the same size as my top. Okay, we're all gathered up, even to our top. I'm going to grab my quarter inch elastic and I'm going to sew it into the seam here. Actually, I'm going to baste first because I always love to baste. So I'm gonna baste my ruffle onto my bottom so that when I'm sewing my elastic, that is all that I will be doing. I won't be worried about getting these gathers in the correct spot. Forgot to move it back to my basting stitch. Okay, so now we're all basted. I have all my layers together. I can turn it over and check. Make sure I think my ruffle is even and is looking good. And now I'm ready to attach my elastic and my with my final stitch. This is a pretty thick. I'm sorry, my little ones. pretty thick seam right here so go nice and slow. I'm going to put my needles down into the elastic, make sure it has it before I start taking off. 
even though I basted, I'm still going to go nice and slowly and be careful to get all these edges. Again, I am not stretching my elastic. As I attach, I'm just putting it in one to one. I'm going to overlap my elastic about half an inch. I started my elastic about half an inch before the seam, so my overlap elastic isn't on the seam where it's already a little bulkier. Here we go. And now all we need to do is remove these basting stitches. I think I got all the basting stitches now. I don't see any anymore anywhere else. Let me trim these threads right here. Okay. Give it a little shake. And now all it needs is some top stitching if you would like to top stitch. You can top stitch along the top all the way around the edges. And you can top stitch around this um, seam right here. You don't have to top stitch on either of them if you don't want to. When I do top stitch, I usually like to use a triple step zigzag. It is a very, very stretchy stitch, which is perfect for swim since it is so tight and the fabric is so stretchy. I hope you had fun sewing along with me. And I hope you have fun making your sunflower swim top as well. I hope once you make it, you share it somewhere, Instagram, Facebook, and let us see it. Thanks for sewing along with me, guys.